Today we're going to do what I'm calling a, a crazy owl. Um, we are going to focus in on the owl's head and we're not going to show really anything other than the owl in this. We aren't going to show the feet, the any branches, tree, whatever. We're just going to do kind of a close-up of a very cool looking owl. Uh, so for many of you, I have uh, provided a start to the drawing and I will, I'm going to go over this, what I gave you with a Sharpie. And it's just a long got a cylinder, okay, uh, kind of shape. And what we're going to do is give it some horns. Up at the top. And we're going to start working on the face by bringing two lines across and meeting in the center and forming the top of the beak. And then we bring them around and there is the beak. Now, if you have something that you can trace around for the eyes, oh, it's about an inch to an inch and a half. This is a little cap that I have recycled from a jar. Um, I think if you have a larger paint, Oh, this one would be perfect. A larger paint bottle, you can use that to trace around. So you want to sandwich that in between the beak and the side of the uh, owl. And we'll do, I've already got this pre-drawn, so I'm just going to you can do a couple of, of extra lines. We want this to look line work to look a little sketchy okay not not perfect and then we're going to put a smaller circle inside our first circle and then an even smaller circle So now we're going to go from the sides of the beak and I'm going to draw lines out this way and one on the other side. This is the bottom of the head. And then we're going to come up here and come down here all the way down to the bottom of the paper and that will be one wing we'll do the other side starting to look like an owl and I'm going to just put I'll stop at the wing. I'm just going to do a second line so we have another space to color in 
there, but you don't need to include it all the way because actually the, the wing will be going over that. Okay, so in terms of putting some pattern and textures on it, uh, we're going to start up here at the top. And I like to do this technique where you just, you don't let your pen leave the paper and you just draw whatever comes out. Again, you can't lift your pen. So it's all just kind of random. Actually, if you need to lift your pen, you can you can do that to just kind of reposition your hand. That's fine. Okay, and then we're going to do on the breast another one line that just zigzags in between the wings. Again, if you need to lift the pen, you can, but just put it down where you let and ended and then go on. And until you get to the bottom of the page. Okay, so speaking of the bottom of the page, now we're going to do uh, the feathers. Let's see if I can push this up a little bit so you can see where I'm starting. Actually, I'll do it this way so you can see. All right, so we're going to do feathers all the way up. And we're just, we're going to start at the bottom so we can layer them over it. And they're just going to be like little teardrop shape. And again, they're just going to be sort of random and overlapping. And you can have space in between them. That's no, no problem. Different sizes. And you're just going to work your way up the wing. See why I named this the crazy owl? It's certainly different from any owl you've probably seen out in nature. And we're going to go all the way up to here with it. You can make these as big or as little as comfortable for you. And then when you're done with that, you'll start over here for the second wing. Again, starting at the bottom. You have some of your feathers going off to the off the side so you don't see all of it. Uh, 
Excuse me. Okay, so now we have a very cool looking owl and we're ready to put some color on it. So we're going to do some of this. The color is going to go on in the form of permanent markers. Make sure you use permanent ones and not washable ones. And then watercolor in some of the other areas. And I'm going to sit down, I've been sitting down. I'm going to sit down to work on this part so I can get a little bit closer. So some of the bigger areas, you probably will want to wait and watercolor those, but some of the areas, the little shapes that we've created with our lines, you can color those in. with your marker. And because these are permanent, when we put watercolor over them, it will, um, it won't smudge them. Okay. So I'm just adding a little bit more where I see closed in spaces. You can use whatever colors you want. There's another closed in space. And you can just work your way down the owl. Oh, one of the things I forgot to tell you is to remind you is that we're, you need to go over your pencil marks with your skinny Sharpie. Sorry about that. I forget sometimes because you're drawing in pencil and I'm drawing in Sharpie so you can see. We'll stop here because I've got a feather going over the line.
Now another thing that you can do is to just go right alongside the black with a different color. This is a good color of blue. I like this. It's kind of neon yellow that I think will look pretty cool. And then I'm going to do kind of a mix of what I've already showed you on the, on the feathers. I'm going to color some in and then others I'm just going to do some line work. And you can use different colors if you'd like. I think I'm just going to stick with the pink. sure you pause if your arm is getting or hand is, uh, is getting tired.
that one side done. So I'll go into the next one with the same technique. Okay, now what I'd like to do is do the circles, the black part of the eye. And do that with Sharpie so that it you can get a nice crisp circle. So I'm going to do something here with this. Again, you're just playing around, kind of creating as you go along. And then what I've just done is create a different areas for color. So they go from the horns go from being kind of blah to pretty cool.
Okay, so now we are ready to get our paints and I'm going to pause it so that you can, can finish using the markers and then uh, we'll come back with water. Okay, so I did one side with watercolor already, but I left this side blank so that I could um, show you how I did it. And then we'll have one more section to do and, and we'll be finished with this project. So um, I'm using uh, tube watercolors. You can use whatever type of watercolor you want. Um, um, I, you can make up a rule, quote unquote, for how you want to paint this section. And my rule for this section is that I paint over the feathers that I've already colored in, but I don't paint over the feathers that I just outlined. And I kind of like the contrast between the, the darker feathers, the background, the background being this, and uh, the whiter feathers. So I'm going to turn my paper like this. So you gotta keep your rule in mind. You can make whatever rule. You can also say, okay, my rule is that there's no rules. I'll just paint whatever I want. That's fine too. So I'm painting over the feathers that I've already colored in and not painting over those that I just outlined. Your rule might be, I'm painting over everything. Oops, I almost violated my own rule.
now I'm going to look at my colors and see what I think would look cool. I think I'm going to come back with another color of orange, one that's just a little bit lighter to go over this, the breast section. And I'm just going to paint over. That's interesting. This blue is smearing a little bit. That's weird. It's supposed to be a, a permanent marker. Oh, well. So we're going to make some sort of green colors. And maybe I'll try to paint around it. A little bit more. Yeah, it's definitely doing its thing. Oh, well, that could look kind of cool too. It really is a crazy owl. Crazy that permanent markers are not so permanent here. Sets that you have might not be doing this. Well, you can see color theory in action. Blue and yellow or orange um, makes green. All right, we did it. Good work. Now, if you want to paint the background, you can, uh, but you can also just leave it white.
Thank you.